This is the Nissan Patrol Warrior, an epic take on the iconic Y62 Patrol generation and the last of its kind. It's Australian developed and it makes the Patrol even more hardcore than it already was. So, should you buy one? Well, I'm going to tell you in this review whether you should and just how good it is at doing all the things that a family might want to do, especially an adventurous family. Stay tuned, there's a lot to cover. Like, subscribe, let's get to it, come on. The Patrol Warrior costs just over $100,000, which is not a small amount of money. It's not a small SUV either, nor is the capability and practicality on offer in this big thing. But it is a lot more money than if you were to buy the TI version of the Patrol, or the TIL version for that matter. And this one is based on the entry-level TI, but it has had a bunch of work done by the team at Premcar in Melbourne. They know how to make good things even better, and they've done that with this SUV. And some of the things they've done include underbody protection, you've got a 29 millimeter lift kit, revised suspension, 120 kilo GVM upgrade, you've obviously got these huge tires on these 18 inch alloy wheels which look the part, you've got a bimodal stainless steel exhaust system that pokes out the back next to the rear driver's side door because they've done a lot of work to be able to fit one of those wheels and tires underneath the boot of the car so you do have a full-size spare and you've also got a tow bar as well as standard so look it's doing pretty well when it comes to the exterior changes to this vehicle and on the inside it has also seen the removal of the ugly 80s look wood grain trim instead now there's like an alcantara gray finish with warrior embossing on it and it does upgrade the cabin a bit but there's still some bits in the cabin that aren't upgraded at all and i'll tell you about them when we get to the interior section but hey if you're considering something like this for this kind of money what else could you consider i've got some good alternatives the obvious alternative to the patrol is the toyota land cruiser 300 series but hey you're going to be getting a gx base model for this kind of money it doesn't get seven seats doesn't have anywhere near the sort of off-road mod bits that this car has pretty basic on the inside so you're going to be looking at more like 120 130 140 thousand dollars to get a Land Cruiser 300 with these sorts of mods um, and then you have to get one as well they're hard to get your hands on so look it might be the best alternative in theory but um, I've got a few other options you might want to check out how about the Ford F-150 yeah I know it's a dual cab ute I know it's not an SUV but it does have huge towing capacity it does have a very powerful six-cylinder engine and it's got a huge cabin although yeah you don't get seven seats but you get five five really big ones so it could be a really good option for you if you are into the adventure side of things and look it can go off-road maybe not as far off-road as this thing but hey it could be a really good alternative and finally how about the GWM Tank 500 the new hybrid powered 4x4 SUV with three rows of seats all the safety tech you could imagine, and assertive pricing as well. It's about $25,000 less than the Nissan Patrol Warrior for the high grade version of that model range. And it's very capable off-road, on-road, and has three ton towing as well, plus a seven year warranty. So it could be the best alternative to the Nissan Patrol, but let me know what you think in the comments section below. It was a pretty amazing basis to work from, but hey, I reckon the people at Premcar decided they wanted to make something that looked like what you'd get in a Hot Wheels packet. And that's exactly what this looks like to me. It's even got the stickers to prove it, but it's also got a bunch of really clever elements around the car to differentiate it from the other lesser Nissan patrols. And look, obviously you've got those huge tires, 18 inch wheels with massive tires, and they are seriously off-road capable tires, as you'll see soon, but the stickers i'm never sure about stickers they've also done some clever design stuff at the back you don't necessarily notice it until you have a look and let's do that right now so you've got recovery hooks underneath you've got a tow bar and a full-size spare with that same size wheel and tire package they've had to basically redo this whole section underneath the boot of the car to make it a bit more user-friendly and look it is still a very user-friendly suv I mean, as long as you're tall and can reach to put things in the boot, because it's kind of high. Let's have a look at the boot. 
Yes, it's a hundred thousand bucks. No, it doesn't come with an electric tailgate, which could be a bit of an issue for some people out there. But I think the bigger issue here is that this car has been lifted up and it's got much higher profile tires. So you are having to lift things a lot higher up into the boot. So if you're loading heavy items in, you might find it to be a little bit annoying. And look, the boot space is actually pretty good with three rows of seats up. And look, they're in their most sort of upright position or almost their most upright. Um, and it just means that you do have a fair amount of practicality if you do need all three rows of seats in use. If you don't, you can pull these little levers, drop those seats down, and you end up with a much, much more family friendly size of boot. You'll see the number on your screen now. And there's a few little extras here as well. You've got a socket for a 12 volt on that side. You've got a couple of little hooks here to tie things in place. And you've also got an underfloor storage section to put your tow bar receiver thing. That's bloody heavy. So at least you've got those things. And as I mentioned, you get a custom made section underneath the body of the car so you can fit a full size wheel and tire. Just one other thing though, it's a bit of a reach to try and get those seats back. Some other vehicles in this segment have little buttons on the side that will fold the third row seats back up for you. You don't get them here, so you have to do this. Unless there's another way that I don't know. One thing that's been a bugbear with the Nissan Patrol for a long time now is this infotainment display, which for multimedia is pretty poor. And really it's sort of asking you to comply with it rather than it complying with you. So it's not a very handy system to use. You don't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Maybe it will be an easy upgrade for you though if you do want to put a different screen in. That's what I would do if I was buying this vehicle because otherwise it is um, pretty difficult to live with because Bluetooth often fails. You've got a CD player, if CDs are more your thing and you don't spend much time on the phone, but I do when I'm driving. So yeah, um, it's not ideal. Also, it looks terrible because it's so old. The graphics are so old as well. Sure, they are sooner maps. So you've got off-road maps, which is great, but um, yeah, that could be improved very easily, very quickly, and pretty affordably as well. Now, you've also got an array of buttons and controls down below. I like the fact that you've got buttons and dials, and it does mean that using this screen is simpler than it otherwise would be. And you've also got a dedicated climate control area down here as well, with your uh, climate control knobs and your buttons for your fan and that sort of stuff. That's all great to see. A couple of USB ports down here as well pair of cup holders too, a couple of extra storage sections, a conventional shifter, which in 2024 is actually unusual. So that's nice. Um, and you've got a covered center console bin as well. And look, storage is okay. You've got that stuff I've already mentioned, plus a couple of bottle holders in the doors, um, but it's not necessarily as um, I guess user-friendly as some other vehicles of this size when it comes to storage. There's no wireless phone charger because of course there isn't. The seats are very comfortable. They are very broad. So if you're a slimmer person, you might find that you will move around a little bit in the seat, especially the flat base. But if you're a bigger person, then you'll be pretty comfy, I reckon. Uh, now, one other thing I wanna mention about this front seat experience, you do have some level of adjustment to the steering. You can do the reach adjustment thing, but you can't lift it up and down. It's just in and out. So that's a little bit annoying. Also very annoying for me in terms of the drive experience when I'm sitting in the driver's seat, there is no digital speedometer on this car. And that is really frustrating because every K counts, remember that. Now, you've also got these little buttons up here to reset some elements of the trip computer. Um, and it's a very basic computer basic dials, I guess that's all you really need. Good controls on the steering wheel though. And look, the material finishes are all pretty good. You've got this sort of ruched leather on the doors and this Alcantara finish across the dashboard, uh, which has Warrior uh, embossed in it as well. And I like that. I think it adds something to the cabin because otherwise it'd be wood grain and it'd look yuck. So let's check out the second row space. Now, excuse having my child seat fitted in here for my daughter. Um, she absolutely loves this car, so we've been going everywhere in it this week. So um, that might be a reason to buy it, to make your little one happy. 
might make yourself happy by doing that. You've got ISO fixed points in the window seats and three top tethers as well for the second row. Uh, and you've got some good features like directional air vents. They're really good when they come out of the ceiling, especially for younger kids, because they do make a bit of a difference on hot days. You've got climate control down here as well. So you can adjust the fan speed, you can adjust the temperature and the different modes as well. A couple of USB ports down there too. You've got these little map pockets on the seat backs. There's bottle holders in the doors and as well as that you also get a flip down armrest with some pop-up cup holder things so look for the most part it is a pretty practical second row space but i just need to also tell you about how you get into the third row this vehicle has the smaller portion on the driver's side so that means that if you are going to use the third row all the time and you have a child seat fitted like I do, you might find that you um, are always having to hold your child's hand to put them into the back row and you're doing it on a road as well. Remember, curbsides on the left for us here in Australia. So it isn't ideal and lots of SUVs that are made to sell in big numbers in other parts of the world tend to have this layout. Anyway, let's have a look at how it works when you do need to get into the third row. It's a uh, fold and tumble mechanism same for the other side as well which is good uh, and let's see what the space is like for an adult all right so i got back here okay it isn't necessarily the easiest vehicle to climb in and out of but um, look when you are back here there's i mean there's a little bit of foot room not very much for someone who's got big feet like me knee room is a little bit tight as well your knees are in a very high up position if you're an adult and look, there's reclinability to the back seat, so you can lay back a little bit, which does ease the headroom a little bit, but it's also not the most ideal situation. So if you are looking for a three row vehicle with plenty of actual occupant space, go and buy a Kia Carnival is my advice, or a Hyundai Staria. Um, it's got an all wheel drive diesel model. Won't go as far off road as this, obviously. Now, speaking of off road, you do have grab handles in the third row, so you can hold on for dear life whenever your parent is taking you on a wild adventure. You've also got directional head height air vents in the third row, bottle holders in the uh, wheel arches here as well. There are three seats, no child seat points or isofix points in the third row, so it is a three kid or three youngsters car um, with those isofix points and top tethers in the middle row here but yeah i don't know i think it makes a better five seater than it does eight seater you've probably seen the reports about the next nissan patrol getting a different powertrain obviously this one is a bit of a dinosaur but 5.6 litres of V8 petrol powered fury is what you'll find under the bonnet. And you'll see the outputs on your screen now. They haven't changed compared to the other versions of the Patrol. So it drives relatively similarly in terms of the engine and transmission. Still a seven speed automatic, still with four wheel drive, low range available as well. So it does have a bunch of off-road modes as well. And it does have the towing capacity you would expect. 750 kilos for an unbraked trailer three and a half tons for a brake trailer. Just keep in mind though, even though you do get a tow bar and wiring harness fitted as standard in every Nissan Patrol Warrior, you don't get electronic trailer brake control system. So you'll have to add that on or use an elect brakes unit. Um, so yeah, I mean, it does seem to tick a lot of boxes from the powertrain perspective, but it is a bit outdated as well. You have to remember that this is a big rig and it's an old rig as well. So it does have a foot operated park brake, which is very, very strange. If you haven't used one of those before, it might take a little bit of getting used to. And sorry if you can hear my shoes squeaking, the uh, rubber mats fitted to this car are a little bit squeaky and uh, so are my shoes. So here we go. Let's go driving in the Patrol Warrior and we're just gonna do the on-road portion first, just me on board. Um, and these are my impressions of what this vehicle's like uh, as the sort of car that you might use it for just commuting, just getting around town and dropping your kids off, whatever you might be doing. So in these situations, this is better than it probably ought to be, this car, because it is comfortable, it's composed, it's also still very, very easy to drive. For something that is this big and has this level of intent to it, um, it is surprisingly easy to drive this car. And I reckon for a lot of people who aren't necessarily uh, needing a car with the capabilities that this vehicle has, 
it's gonna feel pretty easy to adjust to the size of it. My partner said that it's probably the biggest car she's ever driven and she thought it was okay to get used to as well, even though you're up sort of at truck height with some people in traffic. She also commented on the fact that it is so high off the ground that loading our daughter into the child seat, she actually had to lift her up rather than put her down. So uh, yeah, I mean, those sorts of things do play into day-to-day -day life. And there's also things in this car that don't bode so well for day-to-day -day life. The surround view camera system, for instance, just looks very very poor the lens display is not very good so it can take um well hopefully not guesswork and hopefully not um, touch parking but it is still a little bit difficult to figure out the exact perimeter of this car when you are parking it it is easy enough to park though surprisingly it's pretty um, amenable at changing directions at lower speeds there's not too much fuss with the steering it's actually pretty direct in the way that it behaves considering it's on such big Buffy tires, uh, yeah, I reckon that it is a pretty livable option for people who are looking for something that can go off-road if they need it, but might not necessarily spend all of its time off-road. All right, so V8 engine, if you're just driving it sedately like I am, it's ample in terms of the pulling power available to you. If you do drive it with a bit more guts, it does take a few gears to get back into the power band and then it'll rev hard. And look, you don't need to drive it fast to feel like you're going fast because it's got such a crazy exhaust note, but it is still quick enough. And even with more than one or two or three people on board, you will find that it does get along pretty well. Another thing that I'm really impressed with is the ride because it does sort of coast over bumps. You don't really feel much in terms of the way that the bumps are absorbed by the suspension and those tires, those sidewalls are huge. So they do their job as well. It's also got a pretty honest brake pedal feel and responsiveness as well. Like I said, it's big and it's heavy, but it doesn't necessarily feel all that big and heavy to drive, which is a credit to the people at Premcar and Nissan. Okay, now it's time to tow with the Nissan Patrol Warrior and we've got quite a big caravan on the back of this vehicle. The sort of van that you would probably expect that someone who buys a vehicle like this will appreciate because it's the Avita Topaz, it's got all-terrain tyres fitted to it and it is a big van. Thanks to my mates at Avita for helping out with this loan um, and I just want to say that this vehicle doesn't feel like it's out of its depth when it comes to towing something this large. Uh, look, you do have to use the engine, but it's actually kind of a joy to use this engine because it is an absolute corker uh, and it sounds fantastic as well, thanks to that bimodal exhaust. When you do need to accelerate away from a standstill or if you're just cruising along even, it's got a nice rumble to it. So I really like that. And also the way that it behaves itself while towing is good to the most degree. There are some elements that maybe could be better. The steering feels just a little bit floatier as you probably would expect. I mean. It's a very heavy caravan on the back. And also it doesn't necessarily have some of the same sort of technology that other vehicles have when it comes to towing assistance and that sort of thing. But even so, it does have a really, really handy, um, I guess, manner to the way that it tows because it's not feeling like it's out of puff and it's not really feeling like it's struggling in any particular way either. Just gonna overtake here. Listen to that. This automatic transmission maybe isn't as clever as some others because it doesn't quite have as many gears to play with as some other SUVs or bigger vehicles in this sort of category, but it does do a really good job for the most part, I think, when you're towing. Um, it's maybe a little bit busy when you are going on and off the throttle at about 80 k's an hour, which is probably what you will want to be driving at for the most part. If you go at 110 or so, you will feel that it is sort of 
a little bit floatier, obviously. The faster you go, the floatier things feel. But yes, I think that the transmission does a pretty good job for the most part. I haven't necessarily been asking much of it in terms of incline and decline or anything like that, but it will just jump between gears at higher speeds in some situations. So it's just dropped back a gear there, for instance. You can take matters into your own hands if you wish. There is a manual mode. And so fifth, sixth, put it back to fifth, fourth. Yeah, if you want to, you can do that. There is no specific towing driving mode. It's just an auto four wheel drive setup and on-road driving that we're doing right now. The biggest issue for me though, when it comes to towing is the reversing camera display. Um, because the camera's offset, it makes it even harder to see where you are reversing into. And it's a very pixelated view of the, I guess the view from the lens. So um, if there's a way to upgrade the lens so you get better clarity, then that's what I would do. Uh, but otherwise it does feel well, feels like an old SUV and I guess it is an old SUV so have to forgive it a little bit but um, you just look at some of the other vehicles out there these days with those super high res high clarity cameras and yeah it's not the most fulfilling experience when you're trying to reverse up to something like this and hitch it up. Something that has impressed me with this patrol warrior is the ride comfort. Look this road that I'm on right now is terrible. I've driven it in a few different cars in the past and the surface is patchy. There's potholes and pockmarks and um, there's also like drainage channels that run across it. It is a sealed road but it may as well be unsealed. It's that bad but it does just show that there is a real level of sophistication to the way that this vehicle handles itself and I appreciate that and you and your family will as well because it is pretty comfy. Although you know maybe a little bit floaty at times over undulating bumps because it's got those huge tires that it's just squishing down on to help you get over those lumps and bumps in the road. Just coming up to a stop right now and yes I've got an elect brakes unit uh, in play here but the brake pedal feel is very good and the way that the vehicle holds its line when you are solid braking it does um, make you feel confident in the stopping power here just listen to this. Yeah. Sounds so good. I love it. Okay, just like most other selectable four-wheel drive vehicles, it has high and low range. So to put it into low range, you just twist this little dial down here across to 4L. It does take a second or two to actuate the transmission into four low. I'll put it into drive and hopefully it just locks in. Yep, there we go. And you've got a bunch of different drive modes as well, which you can use in four wheel drive high range or low range, including uh, rock, sand, and there's also a snow function and an on-road function as well. But um, look, I've been sticking in the rock mode because I think it's the best suited to this sort of terrain that I'm on. I will say though that some other cars now have like mud and ruts, which would be the ideal uh, for this sort of situation that I'm in. There is no mud mode for the patrol warrior, but I still think that it does get through all sorts of obstacles with absolute ease. The biggest issue with it is that it's so bloody big. You have to be mindful of the amount of space that you take up on the tracks and how narrow some of those tracks can be. And you've got to be okay with well, potentially copying a few little uh, stripes in your paintwork. Just call them tiger stripes, right? So it doesn't take too much physical work to get this big old beast where you want it to go. And also I'll say that at higher speeds when you are doing uh, sort of this sort of gravel road driving, you will find that the uh, steering is nice and manageable. Um, it is still a little bit wafty is the word that comes to mind it's a bit of a motoring journo term and it sort of doesn't really have the most direct feel to it but hey um, 
you don't necessarily want the most direct feel when you are picking over bumps and lumps like this and a lot of that comes down to the size of these tires because they take away a little bit of the tactility from the surface but i will say this this thing's an absolute weapon when it comes to off-road stuff and look i haven't tested it to the same degree that you might find on some of the 4x4 youtube channels or in the magazines or whatever but um I still think that it is a seriously capable off-roader for what is a purpose-built machine to do exactly that. One thing I have noticed while I've been doing this lower speed driving uh, section of this review, um, it is still a big cumbersome vehicle when it comes to moving it in small areas. So um, just keep that in mind. Obviously it is a large SUV and it's wide and it's tall and the steering is pretty heavy at times, especially when you have low range engaged or four wheel drive high range, because um, I mean, then you've got a bit of steering and a bit of drive happening at the front axle as well. So if you're just in auto mode, you might notice that the steering is a bit lighter because, well, it's primarily driving the rear wheels uh, and then occasionally using the front axle if it needs it. All right, let's talk about the big problem with the Nissan Patrol, this current generation model. This engine is thirsty. There is no other way to describe it. It loves a drink. Um, if it was a person, you would be having an intervention because it really is an absolute guts. Um, the official combined cycle figure is on your screen now. That's what you should be able to achieve across a mix of driving, but in normal driving, uh, you'll see what I've seen across a mix, so urban, highway, freeway, and the usual drudgery of life. And then, yep, I'll show you what I achieved when it was towing. And that actually was surprising to me. I thought it would be even more thirsty when it came to the towing aspect, but it was not too bad. And now I'll show you what I achieved when it came to the off-road component of this test. Yeah, I mean, it gets through fuel fast. It will get through a tank of fuel, you'll see the capacity on your screen now, in less than 800 k's. Probably less than 500 k's in most situations. Now there is no applicable safety rating for the current generation Nissan Patrol, so if that matters to you, um, just keep in mind that it does come with a bunch of standard safety technology and equipment across the entire patrol range, including autonomous emergency braking, you've got a lane keeping system, you've also got blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, a surround view camera system, parking sensors as well, so it does have a heap of really good tech, and none of it's that annoying to deal with either, which is another big bonus. Plus, you've got airbag protection for all three rows of occupants. The curtain airbags go all the way to the back, plus you've got dual front and front side airbags as well. I think it's safe enough, and honestly, it's that big, it feels safe to drive too. Buy a Nissan Patrol in Australia, you get a five year unlimited kilometer warranty. Buy a Warrior, you also get the same warranty for any of the bits that have been added apart from the tires. So look, I reckon that does stack up. If you were to buy an entry level version of this SUV and take it to get some aftermarket bits fitted, you might not have that same level of peace of mind when it comes to the accessories and the warranty all being bundled up into one thing. Now, one other thing you need to know about this car, servicing intervals on your screen now, not terrific. And also servicing costs on your screen now, not terrific. Um, it's a pretty expensive thing to maintain, but hey, it's expensive to buy. It's gonna be very expensive to keep the fuel up too. So maybe you've just gotta have deep pockets if you want a Nissan Patrol. Look, it is excellent. It does a lot of things really well. Fuel consumption, it doesn't do that well at all. And look, the interior just looks so dated compared to some of the more modern takes in the 4x4 realm. So I don't think that it necessarily makes sense for everyone, but if you are the sort of person who wants a big V8 petrol powered 4x4 that can tow while using a lot of fuel and also go seriously off-road, then the Nissan Patrol Warrior could be the right car for you. It's a very small number of people, I imagine. Stay tuned. If you've got any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section below. And if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to keep up to date with all of my reviews. See you in the next one.